So now we're going to mold another cylinder here. Uh, we got a cylinder over on the left on the mandrel. Uh, it is cooling and this man wooden mandrel keeps the record from warping. I barely ever have to do anything to the inside of these blanks because of this process of keeping the records in the right order. So first thing we need to do is we have to lubricate the mold. Again, we get our mineral oil. Put a little there on so it doesn't screw as easily. Apply a good amount of mineral oil on, especially up here. This gives a nice bearing surface for our mold to release the record. Okay, so that is, well, and this is quite hot yet. It's warm to the touch. you got to keep the mold warm. So this is our uh, element here. Uh, and it needs to be lubricated because it's very important that the outside of the mold comes off of the uh, record. And it comes off first. It's opposite of most molds uh, made today. Most molds... Uh, you remove the core instead of the outer part. Uh, according to the original instructions from the 1890s, this is how the procedure was actually done. Because they had to make a lot of them. It had to do a great job, but be efficient. And do you think that they really waited an hour for each record to come out of the mold? No, they didn't. It, it, they had to reduce the element. In the, the actual original days... It was about 16 minutes per record for molding uh, from the time that the wax was poured in the mold by the time it got to the end of the table. And uh, so, screw that down. Put the uh, outer two. This only goes on one direction. Uh, the uh, other side will not fit on our washer on there. So we've lubricated both parts. And then we add what's called the reservoir. This is so that a head of wax goes on and creates a bubble-free blank. I've not seen bubbles in the blanks for a long time. So that we also run it through two filters into the wax. It's got two screens. So our next procedure is actually to um, pour our material which is a brown wax, and the people have called it brown wax for years, but it's actually an illuminated soap. The soap's too hard to lather. It was developed by Jonas Ellsworth in 1889. We must uh, pour our record in less than 30 seconds. Okay, we are above, we are above the little knob on top. So, now we have to set a timer and uh, then we can remove our record from the mold. That signals that our, our record should be done. So, uh, let's see if we can extract this record. First of all, we need to get this part off. It's quite hot. I can withstand lots of these temperatures, though. We want to take the the uh, what's this, the reservoir off of it. And, you know, it's quite hot yet. You can see that the wax is still in a plastic state. You'll notice when I I cut it loose. This this is the little wax plug that it's kind of in a tarish state. You're going to be surprised what we're going to do next here. so it really grips the uh, mold. And this is 
going to surprise you. According to the 1890s instructions, the outside of the record mold comes off before they come off the core. So, just like that. Surprising, huh? Yeah, notice that the record is still quite plastic. By the way, this is one that's been uh, cooling onto the cooling mandrel. Uh, this keeps it from warping the record. Uh, while that's getting a little bit exposed to the air, we're going to remove then the uh, we'll remove this piece then from it. Uh, so. This is lubricated mandrel, and uh, a little wraps on there, you'd think it would break the record, but it doesn't. There is your, there is this one. This is a uh, um, rough casting, and we'll go over to the rough casting pile. Notice this one has a nice color, and yes, there's glove marks and markings around it. I want to show you that in a little while I'll show you that the mandrel actually will go somewhere in the middle so everything about this blank is just fine uh, I think that our other part has uh, cooled sufficiently to be tough enough to uh, remove the record from the inner mold part just takes a little bit exposure to the air to uh, you can see that there's worn the pattern of the mold into this um, clamp we don't want to fully put it down near the wax because there's another part of the procedure Again, we want to make sure that it's uh, good and tight on there. And let me put the, put the bottom of the mold on. If you're wondering, yes, it'll have glove marks in it, and that was actually on the original procedure as well. So we are going to then remove the record from the mold. But first we have to get it so your body is on there. And yes, it's still hot, but it's not hot enough to, to burn my hands too bad. That's because I've done this for a long time, so my hands are kind of accustomed to this warm cylinder wax. So that is how you unscrew it. You'll notice we have a, we'll take a little bit of this fin off of there. You'll notice that it actually has the spiral in there or from the mold. It's still quite hot. Uh, so we want to lubricate this wooden mandrel next. And this is where the, the blanks can contract evenly. Make sure that it will release. We put some mold release on it. And then put the blink on. And that's normal for the top to do that. A little crack there is not going to hurt anything because our usable record is somewhere over here away from that area. So that will contract onto the mandrel. Um, one of the interesting elements, as people wonder, like, is the wax, the way my procedure is, is the wax solid throughout the record? Well, this is a broken portion of a blank. And, uh, so you can see the spiral core of the blank. And, uh, so we're going to do some tests here to show you some things. 
If you look on the side, you'll notice that the wax is indeed solid throughout. There's no white little uh, element of, uh, of crystallization. If you have a bad blink, you'll see a white line here, very, very prominent, a bright white. And you notice that it's perfectly amorphous all the way through this wax. Now, some elements to know about with wax to test them is that when you take any type of a blade to it, you should get a nice curly shaving that's slightly powderish. Slightly powdered, but yet kind of curly shaving. It would, you notice it, it comes off, but yet has a little bit of uh, powderish to it. And this will also show you the element. Let's see how that shaving comes off, just like you're shaving a record. Now, another thing is the snap test of the wax. Good cylinder wax has a certain snap to it, like that. And notice again where we cracked it open, there is solid wax throughout the blank. This is the full length of a blank. So that shows you that the wax is pretty good. And there is the spiral element of the wax. So we're going to show you how to trim a cylinder. This is a casting, a brown wax casting. Let's take a look through it a little bit here. Here, we'll give you a really good look at the inside of the blank here. So, as I said, we stretch these cylinders out and ream them while they're still plastic with this wooden core. So, what does that mean? So, we take a mandrel. This is a phonograph mandrel out of a D standard Edison phonograph. And we put it inside of the record. And you notice that it's about in the middle of it. So, we now are going to mark inside of the record here so we know that we have to come out this far then we mark it and so we cut it right here this is where we're going to cut it there here. So we'll cut it there and then for this end we're going to cut it actually I want it a little bit over so we're going to cut it right there. So we'll get a little mark there. Take a mandrel out. Yep, that, that'll be good because we'll have a little bit on each end that will Put it in our miter box here. And we're going to trim the cylinder. And I said we're coming back a little ways. We'll cut it here. Always cut this side first. Because this side is the one that sometimes will fool you into thinking that it's true. So we trim it. Use a very light pressure. I have another video that shows you the making the ends on the blank and uh, shaving it down. A little bit on molding and still pictures. So this is our cut off end. Um, so again Take a look at the structure. You can tell a lot by when you cut the structure out. You notice that there is no, of any kind, there is no um, 
Look very closely, you won't see any crystallization in the middle of the blank. Very important. That gives you, you can usually tell if there's any holes or anything because it'll show up right here. And it's solid wax throughout, just like it's supposed to be. So we'll put our phonograph mandrel in again, make sure that it doesn't wiggle around. And notice that that's just perfect on the end there. Because if you have it too far out, well, then you have problems. So let's try to wiggle it. Okay, we're going to push it in there. No wiggle. Except for me. But you can notice there's no wiggle. It's solid. That is what you want. You want the interior to be as perfect as possible. So now it's time to trim this end of the blank. And just kind of let the saw do the work. Now, in the old days, they had machines that had knives that did this very quickly. And run by a steam, you know, steam heated everything, trimmed them, and ended them. They weren't done actually by hand like this. They're done by machine. This is a little older fashioned than the original way of doing it, I suppose. Scrap wax around here to make 200 blinks just with scrap wax. But the scrap wax is actually used to make other wax. So that is our cutoff large end and our cutoff small end of the blank. So now let's take a look. This is the, the thick end of the blank, and notice there it's amorphous all the way through. This is before we actually, and you can see the spiral really nicely, the uh, spiral core. So this is what's called a trimmed blank. It has not been edged or shaved yet. So that's our rough blank. And we're going to set these aside because they will go into another batch of wax. And this is what's known as a rough blank. What you are seeing is some stages of cylinder records. What you first see here is the stage known as the molding stage. And this is records that are out of the mold and they have nothing done to them. This is a rough casting as they come out of the mold. You notice the spiral core in the blanks. But this is a rough casting from the mold. You can see they have glove marks. If I can locate the original procedure that, that was used at Edison's uh, factory around 1890s, this is precisely how the records were made. You have an oversized uh, blank that comes out of the mold, and the reason is it's compensate for any changes that the wax may do. Uh, you have a better luck of having a good blink come out of the casting. Uh, half of the wax goes back into making more cylinders. Each cylinder then subsequently makes a half of another casting or a whole cylinder. It all ensures quality. I don't know if there's anyone who is making cylinders 
where the rough casting is actually twice the wax of a finished blank. That is uh, for a, about 200 grams of wax in each one of these castings. The finished blank is around 90-95 grams. Well, our next stage is to trim the record. So this is a trimmed blank. This is when it's checked on the mandrel. And so some of the procedure for checking this is thus. This is a rough casting. The mandrel would go in there and wherever the mandrel stops, make sure that it does not wobble at all. But wherever that is, that is where the, the casting is cut. Uh, then you can see how it changes. So this is the trimmed casting that has been edged. So it's been cut off and edged. This is a typical phonograph mandrel. So you want a little space on the end. And the reason for that is, uh, during different weather conditions, that band can change. And it is usually necessary to get the best recordings. If you're going to make a recording that's going to withstand being played and also can be recorded on, it, it must be a medium hardness. It must be hard enough to withstand being played, but yet soft enough to be cut. But the best cutting and the best fidelity is between 85 to 100 degrees uh, for the area, the air temperature around your blank. So this is a trimmed blank. So that's what they look like, uh, the size of them. Right now it's uh, over about 2.3 inches in diameter. And you'll notice the inside has the, the spiral core like an original Edison blank does. So we have the rough casting, and then we have a trimmed record, and then this is the finished product. They still have a little bit to go for shaving before they are shipped out or used. But I believe that these are pretty nice blanks, wouldn't you agree? These are actually made of metallic aluminum soap. There are other people who currently are trying to make blanks for recording out of polymers and other types of things. I must say that it took Edison over a thousand twenty experiments to get to the stage at the laboratory. He had a whole crew of very well-versed scientists who were working on the problem of the formula and even had some troubles himself between late 1888 and early 1889 where they thought they had a eureka moment. Uh, they found that the aluminum stearate itself was too hard and it wore out the cutters and caused problems. So they figure out that they needed to soften it. Their first trial of softening was a substance known as oleic acid, red oleic acid. Well, what happened was pretty dismal. The oleic acid came to the top of the blank, making it unplayable. They had made 
hundreds or maybe thousands of pounds of these blanks and did quite a bit of recording because the phonograph was new so they wanted to do a lot of recording experiments and unfortunately by by the may of of 1889 the formula was found to be not usable so later part of 1889 almost 1890 the present formula that I use was developed by Jonas Ellsworth. It is a it is tempered with cirrus and wax. I can tell you this because if you attempt to make this type of formula and everything, the formula itself is out there. The process is unbelievably hard to do to make the actual compound. It has a certain procedure of heating and reheating. It has uh, the formula itself has to be done in a certain time period. Ingredients have to be added at a certain time. It is still in constant uh, improvement. And I've actually made a total, you know, several, uh, around 14,000, 15,000 of these blanks. And I still am learning and improving it. So if you think you can uh, go in there and, oh, I'm going to make really great blanks right off the bat, I could tell you that after thousands of experiments, basically every one of these is still an experiment, even though they are very nice, fine blanks, each one is still an experiment, and each one is an improvement over the one preceding it. And it would take you around fifteen to 20,000 uh the repetitions of this process of knowing what goes on and the improvements uh, some elements that actually uh, cause problems is humidity uh, barometric pressure the relative temperature in the room all affect how the wax works the type of mold you use the materials in the mold if you have two different metals uh, all molds require some preheating you, uh, a, a mold that is like 70 degrees room temperature, which is usual room temperature, will not yield a very good blank. And usually there are several ways to heat the, the mold up. You can heat it up in an oven, and some uh, molds need to be heated up to almost 500 degrees, so around 450, uh, some molds. Uh, some of them need to be just warmed they need to be at least 100 degrees or over to have a successful casting come out of your blank. Sometimes you can pour wax in it a few times and make a blank out of it, and that is your preheat. The first couple cylinders discarded, and then after it you keep a pattern up, and you will make successful blanks. Any break in the pattern uh, might disrupt how the blanks turn out, uh, sometimes repetition will make the mold too hot and the timing will be off and thus you'll need to let the mold cool. There's a bunch of factors in molding and keeping bubbles out of the wax. Now you showed to you in high definition.